Today on The Real Story, emotions running high as Connecticut lawmakers vote to eliminate the religious exemption for childhood vaccines. The governor signing it into law. But it's not the last we're going to hear of it. Lawsuits have already been filed. We debate both sides of the issue this morning. Brian Festa from CT Freedom Alliance and Joel Layden with the Vaccine Angels are our guests. Then the political discourse in our country isn't as healthy as it could be. What if we went back to basics, like what parents teach their kids? The head of Connecticut's Republican Party wrote an op-ed about it, saying our society would be better if we just followed some mom rules. Sue Hatfield will explain this morning. It's all today on The Real Story. Morning, and thanks for joining us on The Real Story. I'm Jen Bernstein. It's now law. Connecticut's religious exemption for vaccines in school-aged kids is out. Governor Lamont signing the bill into law last week. That's after the Senate and the House voted through eliminating it. Now kids K through 12 through grade 12 who are already using the exemption, they're grandfathered in. So for the rest of their academic careers, they're gonna be able to still use that exemption. But anyone starting school, daycares or colleges or moving here, they're gonna have be required to get those vaccines or stay at home for school. Meanwhile, the lawsuits have started. The Connecticut Freedom Alliance standing on the steps of Connecticut's Supreme Court announcing lawsuits saying the law steps on their freedom of religion. Let's talk about the issue with two different advocacy groups here. First, Joel Layden with the Vaccine Angels, as well as Brian Festa with CT Freedom Alliance, as well as We the Patriots USA. Thank you both so much for joining us. Thank you for inviting us. All right, I want to start with you, Brian. Explain these lawsuits that you just filed last week. There's a state and a federal lawsuit, correct? Correct. So what we are seeking to do, obviously, is to overturn this law. We, are, we feel very strongly that this legislation violates the state and federal constitutions, as well as several provisions of state and federal law. So with regard to the state constitution, uh, there is a protection, an express protection, an express fundamental right to a public education in Article 8 of the Connecticut Constitution. And then there is also, of course, in both the state and the federal constitutions, the right to the free exercise of religion. And this bill that was passed into law, that was signed into law by the governor, yes, uh, well, it was last um, Wednesday now, uh, what was absolutely abhorrent, uh, flies in the face of the free exercise clause uh, of the First Amendment of the United States Constitution, because you are forcing families, you are forcing children to choose between one fundamental right and another. Either they can have their right to an education or they can have their right to freely exercise their religion, but they can't have both. Joel, I wanna get your reaction to uh, the law being signed last week. Obviously, it's different from Brian's. We believe that vaccines are safe and effective. Our job, our only mission over at vaccineangel.com is to secure a vaccine and secure excess vaccine and distribute it to thousands of people in the state of Connecticut and throughout the United States. When we hear of groups uh, trying to discredit vaccines, which are the greatest medical achievement ever created in the history of medicine. Vaccines which have saved millions of lives. And we hear of a, of a group which is trying to dismiss vaccines and using the excuse of freedom and liberty. Well, there is no freedom and there is no liberty if you're dead. Right now, we're looking at 600,000 people dead in the United States. We're looking at 32 million cases. We have hospitals running out of beds in this country. The last thing we need is an advocacy group trying to discredit vaccines and trying to reinforce vaccine hesitancy. We need the community to come together as one 
doctors, nurses, healthcare providers, understanding that the greater good, and that is our, our well-being, our health, is at stake right now. Brian, I want to I wanna talk to you about what Joel just said. I want to be clear about this. The law that was passed this past week here in Connecticut does not have to do with the COVID vaccine. Vaccine angels have been making sure to distribute that across the state. And, and Joel, what I think you're saying is essentially this is a time where we need, we don't want vaccine hesitancy right now on any vaccines. And so you're saying uh, that these groups are coming out and, and saying they're not safe, they're not effective, and it's not helping with COVID either. Brian, well, I would assume, right? Taking a look at the, at the Freedom Alliance protest at the Capitol, and looking at their signs, which is saying, you know, vaccines are fake, vaccines will kill you, uh, vaccines will turn you into a giraffe. I mean, come on. I mean, Brian, we're-, we're, we're I, didn't see, I, I missed the giraffe sign. So I, I, I guess I missed up on that one. I would have liked to see that one. That's a new one for me. Brian, is uh, it an excuse? Well, is what is an excuse? What do you have? Using the religion as a way to not get no. vaccines. Do your no. members not believe in vaccines? Absolutely not. Now, let me just make something clear. Our organization, our organizations, uh, both We the Patriots USA and the Connecticut Freedom Alliance, uh, do not advocate against vaccines or for vaccines, okay? We advocate for choice, for freedom of choice. We don't tell people, we're not doctors. I'm not a doctor. I don't go out to people and say, don't get your vaccines. I don't, I'm not licensed. I don't have the right to be saying that to anyone. And even if I were licensed, it wouldn't be my place to say that to anyone. Even if I were the, the, the commissioner of the Department of Public Health, it's not my place to stand in front of someone and say they must get vaccinated, okay? Uh, just like it's not my place to say they must not get vaccinated. We are about choice and many people in our organization are partially or even mostly vaccinated. They may just have an objection to one particular vaccine or two particular vaccines uh, because of something like the use of the aborted fetal cells in the production or uh, actually containing some uh, aborted fetal cell matter. Uh, they may have a, a religious objection to abortion. So it's not about vaccines are bad. And, and, and Joel, I think we, we could have a very civil discussion like we're having now off air um, and, and sort of hash out some of these issues. And you would see that it is we're not on a mission to take down the vaccine industry. I know, there, who knows, there may be, it may have been some people in the crowd that that's what they wanted to do uh, on Tuesday, and they, they would love to do that, but that is not the mission of the Connecticut. Brian, Brian, you had people in the crowd selling fake vaccine cards. I did see that picture. I saw a Brian, picture Brian, on you Facebook. Had, you, had, you had members. You're, you're saying me, Joel, but I didn't have members to do with that. Wearing Holocaust stars? Well, let me tell you something, all right? When a, when a group of people is marginalized based on their religion and is being told that they are going to lose their fundamental rights, their constitutional rights, unless they give up their religion. And when they are told, as we've seen over the past year, that they're not, and especially in the last few months, that they're not going to be able to work, they're not going to be able to travel, they're not going to be able to buy food without this vaccine passport, that sounds an awful lot like what we've seen in our history that's to many different groups. We're not only talking about the Holocaust. Brian, the, the vaccine passports working in Israel where you got over 60% of the population vaccinated and today you don't need to wear a mask anywhere. They're back to normal. They collectively, and, 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 there, and maybe there's a good reason behind that because they were afraid that the Iranians and the jihadists wanted to weaponize COVID. So the entire culture, the entire population, Jews, Christians, Muslims, they came together and collectively they said no. But again, Brian, I, you know, have, I have a question for Brian. How many people at that crowd? Obviously, it was a public rally. Anyone can come to it. But how many of your members do you think were there? Because we did see a picture of vaccine cards being sold, fake vaccine cards. I, I didn't see Holocaust stars. Joel says he saw them. I mean, I, yeah, I want to address, I, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I want to address that. First of all, with regard to fake vaccine passports, vac vaccination cards for COVID, I absolutely do not endorse that. Our group did not endorse that. Our group was not involved in selling them or printing them, okay? I will not be involved in anything fraudulent like that, okay? Um, if people 
don't want to get the vaccine, they need to be honest and say they're not getting the vaccine because of their religious beliefs and voice their religious objection. There are protections in the law for people who voice legitimate, sincere religious objections, and they need to be honest about it, not try to pretend like they're Brian, religious. Brian, you keep mentioning the religious. Can you name a few religious organizations that, that support your organization? Can you name one? It's not about organizations, Joel. What it is, is it's about personal religious beliefs. So the United States Supreme Court, in a pair of cases you may be familiar with, United States versus Seeger and Welsh versus the United States, they were conscientious objector cases during the Vietnam War, War era. And what the Supreme Court found in those cases is that a law that gives preference to religious belief over someone's personal philosophical belief, their personal sincerely held belief, violates the Establishment Clause, and that it is not for the government to intrude and decide which religious beliefs are, which, which personal beliefs are worthy of protection and which aren't. And the United States Supreme Court, I just need to say this, has never, ever ruled that if your beliefs do not align with the official tenets of a major world religion that we heard many of the legislators say over this past session with this bill, that they're not valid. They, that's never been held to be the, the law. So you, saying, you, have filed, you have filed previous cases like this. Have you won any of these cases? Like what? We've never filed a case against the religious exemption because it was never repealed until just last week. Um, but we have cases uh, still ongoing. There's a case uh, regarding the, the Department of Public Health, uh, illegal release of vaccination data that I, I did file, and that's still ongoing uh, in, in uh, New Britain Superior Court. Uh, and then, of course, we have other lawsuits. We have a lawsuit regarding the school masks, but that doesn't have anything to do with this. Does, does the CT Freedom September. Alliance, does the CT Freedom Alliance work with the Internet Research Agency? No, an Internet Research Agency. I don't know what you mean by that. Internet Research Agency is Russian intelligence. They're based in Saint Petersburg. They have over two thousand agents working out of one building, using thousands of different profiles fake profiles on Facebook, on Twitter, throughout social media. And, like bots, and, like their, and their messaging is exactly the same that comes out of... Okay, here's the question. Here's a question. Brian, CT Freedom Alliance and We the Patriots USA, you co-founded both. Are these local organizations? Do they have yeah. national ties? They are both... Uh, incorporated, uh, one is organized because it's an LLC, so not properly incorporated. CT one is Freedom's an LLC, right? CT Freedom is and organized. Then, uh, we the Patriots is a national non they're, they're national, but it's incorporated in Connecticut as well. They're both Connecticut uh, cor uh, organizations, and we are grassroots organizations. We, we don't get, there's been talk of, you know, Bob Duff, Senator Duff at one point said there's dark money coming in. There's no dark money. The people you saw in the crowd, on Tuesday, those are the people that have given us donations. Those are the people that have kept the lights on. Uh, it's it's grassroots organization. We, we don't have any connection. This idea of foreign you know actors that Joel's raising is completely ridiculous. We have absolutely no connection with foreign actors. We are from Connecticut. We're based in Connecticut. Do we have some members that live in different parts of the United States or even the world? Yes, they join our Facebook group. They sign up on our email list. Anyone's welcome to do that. Uh, but we have no coordinated, organized, uh, efforts with foreign governments. That's just absolutely ridiculous. I, I believe you have members who have right. said that they have very close Russian friends. I don't know anything about what you're talking about. If you can show that to me, I'd be happy to discuss it with you, but I've never seen that. Okay, well, let's... I can send it to you. I'd like to hear the results of that, please, Joel. Um, Brian, Joel, I appreciate you both coming on and having a civil discussion. You're on, obviously, completely different ends of this issue. And so I'm glad we could kind of come and talk about it. And um, Brian, obviously, answering a little bit of the allegations that Joel's putting out there about uh, connections. So, and, and can I just say one last thing before absolutely. we go? Yes. Um, so we'll if you'd like more. If you'd like more information, and I, I'm going to allow Joel to do this as well to promote his organization, but you can go to wethepatriotsusa.org, sign up for our email list, learn all about it. We also have ctfreedomalliance.org. And Joel, if you want to give your website. No, by all means. Again, we're about saving lives. Uh, we don't put personal freedom above someone's life. Uh, freedom and liberty is fantastic and great, and I, I embrace it. Um, I'm a combat veteran. I put my life on the front line for democracy. Thank you for but, your I, but, I'll, but I'll put the lives of our children beyond and above 
someone's personal freedom and liberty. Uh, we, are, we are vaccineangel.com. And again, Jen, thank you very much. And Ryan, it was a pleasure speaking with you. And perhaps one day we can get together and have a, a coffee. Sure, thank you. Thank you both very much, Joel. Thank you so much for your service to our country. And I appreciate you guys both coming out here and answering some questions, which are important that we be as you know transparent as possible while we're having this discussion. Thank you both. Thank you. And on the topic of having a civil conversation, still to come on The Real Story, the head of Connecticut's GOP wants to get everyone around a plastic Graco picnic table and go over a few important mom rules. Sue Hatfield joins us discussing an op-ed that she penned. She says those set of rules a lot of parents teach their kids could go a long way in today's political discourse. She's on deck on The Real Story. Stay with us.